And we're back. How you doing? It's uh, Al and Regina, uh, the insecure chef and, and his wonderful wife. Today we're going to be doing another simple dish, but uh, very popular. And there are loads of variations. So this is our, uh, my version. We're going to be doing uh, beef meatloaf in the Ninja Foodie. Now, you might say, well, you can make a meatloaf in the oven. It's really quick. Um, and to be candid, I would say the oven is quicker. Uh, why do I do it in the foodie? Besides the fact that I like to play with it. The fact is that the tenderness and juiciness that this method will bring is remarkable. And that, I think, is a fact. So, um, to save time, as always, and the recipe will, of course, be on the site, I've weighed out all the ingredients. And I think you're going to scan that quickly. You'll see that. All right. And I'm going to be working this recipe with three quarters of a pound of beef. This is uh, 85 15. You can use 80 20 uh, ratio with fat. Your call. All right, so this is 85 to, uh, 15, and I have uh, three quarters of a pound. The rest of the ingredients are weighed out, so we're going to start. So the first thing I'm going to do, if you, I'm going to just check my recipe to make sure I don't make any mistakes. I'm going to uh, try to get my dog to stop barking. Otherwise, we'll have to pause because you'll hear nothing but him. I'm going to put um, in a large bowl, okay, in a large bowl. I'm not on camera anymore, I notice. Uh, I'm going to pull in the beef, so that's going in now. All right, let's see here. Three quarters of uh, thawed beef. And I said this is, uh, I know I said it at least twice, this is 85.20. Okay. Come on, you're going to become part of my meatloaf. And I can get rid of that bag right now. Okay, that's gone. And the next thing going in is going to be, um, uh, I, I use a little onion powder because one of us can't handle onion, which we won't say who. Uh, you most certainly can chop up a quarter of an onion, dice a little bit, put it as much or as little or none at all if you want. I put in literally that much. Okay? It's more for memories of when I used to use a lot of onion. But uh, it works. It doesn't bother anybody. So that's that. So th that's in there. Next goes in the egg, and uh, I'll make a comment about the quantity. You're going to see it on the web. Uh, if you're tempted to not weigh these things out and rather eyeball it, you can try that. But the ratio of egg to milk to bread to meat is a base so that the meatloaf stays together and is semi-firm, etc., etc. You either eyeball it one way or the other, it might come out too mushy, it may come out too dense, your call. I really recommend you take the few extra minutes to weigh these things out. So, here's the egg that's been weighed out. It's actually half an egg. And it'll be interesting to see how you guys weigh out such a thing. I've developed my method for such things. Okay, and that takes care of the egg. Next going in uh, will be the uh, milk. Okay, and that's a, in this case, uh, half a cup of milk. Milk is in. Next thing going in is the breadcrumbs. Uh, if I recall it's also a half a cup of breadcrumbs. Again, don't listen to me talking about it. Look at the uh, at, at the uh, site when it's up online. Okay, and that goes the uh, breadcrumbs. And then uh, I'm going to use a little salt and pepper. Again, I don't weigh these out because it's a matter of opinion. So salt gets a couple of quick shakes. Pepper, I go this. Just to remind you, I used to use that because that's another baddie in the house. And that takes care of... Uh, the ingredients for the meatloaf. So now I'm going to uh, get a glove on and I'm going to start the mixing and then uh, and there we go if you want to get it a look in there. Okay uh, that's the general mixing of this and I'll mix this until it's well uniform so uh, we won't bore you with that. So when I think this is done uh, we'll be back. Okay my apologies for uh, that kind of motion movement. We had a little technical difficulty. I do believe we're recording now. Is that right? Yeah, we are. Okay. If you want to look down here, you can see that the meatloaf has been uh, mixed up and made. Uh, I assume you can see that easily. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do now that it's been thoroughly mixed, and someone might ask me how long did I take? Maybe five minutes of just massaging it around and moving in until it was uniform. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it out of the bowl and I'm going to stuff it in this pan. By This is a fat daddy-o pan, 
which works. It's all rolled aluminum, no coatings, no paints, no nothing. So I'm going to take this out now. My hands are thoroughly washed, and you I assure you. It, right? Oh uh, yes, thank you very much for bringing that up. The fat daddy of pan is well greased. Okay, you can do it with butter, uh, oil spray, uh, commercial joy, uh, whatever. It's just as long as it's well greased. Otherwise, you're never going to get it out of any pan. Okay, I'm putting that in there. You let me know if you can't see it well. Oh no, I can okay. see it. It's perfect. Okay, great. And I'm going to pat it in now, making sure it gets to all sides. Now it'll take me a minute or so. Try to get it level and uniform so that when it is a finished product, it's evenly distributed when you cut it, and more importantly, it would have it cooked evenly. So I'm gonna work on that a bit. Just give me a little bit of time. Okay, and if you're wondering what'll be the next step, the next step is we're going to, believe it or not, pressure cook this as part one of a two-part cooking process. And you know, you're gonna say pressure cooking a meatloaf. Well, let me tell you, this is the step that will infuse the juiciness from the, the meat it's the meat itself and some of the steam, and it is excellent. Delicious. Uh, it really, really comes out good. For us, the extra 10 minutes of whatever it might take compared to taking this pan now and putting it in the oven, which would pretty much be the last step, we feel it's absolutely worth it. And, you know, if you have a foodie, give it a try. And... Uh, the second step, of course, will be uh, just air frying the top to crisp it up uh, with a glaze that I will be putting on. So I'm just looking to see if it's fairly uniform. And the way I do it is almost like a carpenter. I just check to see how it looks. Yeah, it doesn't look bad at all. So that'll be that. Okay. And uh, we'll be back in a minute as I set up the uh, foodie for uh, pressure cooking. Let me put it here. So, I believe we're back, and um, we're now for this, the first step of the cooking process. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be pressure cooking it. So, we have the Ninja Foodie ready to go. I've got a cup and a half of hot water in. I like to cheat. That way, you don't have to wait so long for it to come to steam. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pan. You saw me put the meat in, and I love this, uh, this silicone sling. It makes it very easy for me to take in and take out uh, hot foods. So, I place the uh, Fat daddy -O pan with the meat inside in the sling. I'm going to pick the sling up, and I'm going to put it directly down there. And that thickness of the sling at the bottom keeps the water from actually touching anything, because you just need steam. Okay, with that said, take your foodie uh, pressure uh, lid, make sure it's on seal. And we get the nice sound that we know, and we're ready to go. So, it's on seal. I'm going to... Uh, Hold on for a second, I'll be right back. I forgot to take uh, my recipes with me, which I take great pains of getting correctly as I can, but my memory is terrible. So, uh, let me check what I'm doing this on for. Uh, you think I remember. Oh, nope, sorry for the delay. Look, my wife could sing for you. <laughs> oh God, no. All right, so we're gonna be setting it uh, on high for about 18 minutes, all right? So, we're gonna go on pressure cook high, here it is here, and we're going to set this for 18 minutes. All right, and then we're going to press start, and we're ready to go. In the meantime, I'm going to put on one of my uh, old President Trump uh, steam vents, so that way later when we vent, it won't go shooting up and melt my cabinets. Okay, so you know, this takes a bit of a time, so we'll be back once the countdown is, you know, maybe down to a minute or so. Okay, uh... The countdown clock is finished. We've done our 18 minutes. Uh, the pressure has been released. Thank you, President Trump. And now we're going to uh, remove the pot. And uh, when you take a look in there, it's not going to look particularly appetizing, uh, as you'd expect, because essentially that's boiled steamed uh, meat. Okay? Trust me, it's going to be delicious. So what I'm going to do now is I've got to get a glove. Let me get a glove here, and uh, I'm going to check the uh, the meat temperature. Uh, as you know, beef should be at least 165 degrees. I don't expect any problem whatsoever. Yeah, you see it's over 200. All right, now check another section. Yeah, no problem. So obviously the meat's well done, cooked. You can eat it now. I don't know how good it will taste, but nonetheless. All right, I'm just going to take this now uh, out of here. That's why I like this thing. 
All right. And I'm just going to uh, let it sit here on the counter. And uh, I'm going to just empty this uh, excess water, which means I should have had a second glove. Sometimes you got to wonder what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the water because the next step is going to be air frying. And uh, you don't want any water there when you're trying to air fry and get crisp something up. So it's just plain water. It's very hot, of course. Just pour that away. And then we can put this back in here. And now we're going to, uh, I'm going to take this out and put it in the uh, basket. Like so. I guess I could do that. I could do a couple of things. Actually, you know what? I'm, not, I'm going to eliminate that step, make it easy for you. No reason why you can't air fry it right in here. So, all right, so I'm going to stuff that in there. Right at the bottom. Let me take a look so you can see. Sure. Okay. Uh, you can tuck these out of the way or cross them over. Uh, let's see if I can get it to play. You're probably wondering why not just put it back together. Well, because with these gloves on, <laughs> it's not an easy task. And I don't like to waste your folks' time with things that you may or may not be using. I'll give it a shot, but I don't think that's going to happen. I'll see if I can hold them yet. I'm persistent sometimes. Yeah, of course, the, that cools pretty quick. Yeah, I think I got it. Yeah, okay, so that way it stays up like that. And, uh, of course, I did it backwards. <laughs> uh, we're now ready to spot the glaze. And... Uh, uh, let me just make sure I got everything. We'll be right back. Okay. Okay, so um, the glaze I have now prepared and the recipe's on it. It's very simple. It's simply uh, mustard, ketchup, and brown sugar. You can see it there. Uh, we won't start the process glazing because then it would burn. So right now we just put it in. I'm closing the lid, setting it to air fry at 400 degrees. And I'm going to set it for about... Oh, I don't know, 15 minutes, but you're going to have to keep an eye on it. Because basically, since the meat's already cooked, this is going to come down to how it looks in appearance and how you like the color. The longer you air fry it, the darker it'll get. So we'll start that. And the countdown has begun, and we'll be back. Okay, so um, we've got about uh, four minutes or so left on this. I'm going to open it up, take a look at it. And if it looks good to me, I'll finish the cooking process by basting it with the glaze, which I mentioned is simply a brown sugar, ketchup, and mustard mixture. Recipe, of course, on the, uh, on the channel. So let's take a look, see what we're looking at here. Oh, that looks very nice. It's browning up very good. So, uh, having to try to work my way around these little guys, because again, if I open them, I'm never going to get them closed again because it's going to be simply too hot. You want me to lift it with the fork, maybe? Yeah, maybe you can do that. Yeah. All right, yeah. Let's try that. Easy, don't dig into the meatloaf, please. Yeah, that's good. Just kind of lean into your side. Yeah, just lean there. So I'll work on this side first. So I'm just taking this with a brush, and I'm basting the meat. Actually, you could probably throw a bunch on there and then move it around. Yeah, that'll work out nice. Yeah, I'm going to baste this meat around. You can hear it sizzling, I think. At least I can and, you know, you don't have to worry about temperature anymore because, as you know, we, we were over 200. I'm going to switch sides. There's a little impromptu here, so bear with us. Because I, I usually do a lot of these steps by myself. So, let me get this in here. And, you know, uh, based on the recipe, you will have more than enough glaze to put on. And it's really your call of how much you want to put on there. Because really the last thing we're going to do now is put it back in air fry mode and just really get a color on here that my wife and I like. And obviously it's your choice as to whether you want to do this step at all or whether you want to really darken it up and crunch it. It's really your call. So I'm guessing that's enough. You see, I've only used about half of it. All right. What do you think? You think that's enough? That's enough. That's enough. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't miss anything. Nope. Looks good. Okay. Very good. That was a good idea, look. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to go down here, and I'm just going to let it continue the countdown, and I'm going to check on it. We don't want to uh, burn the glaze, because with the brown sugar and the ketchup, you know, you can burn it eventually. So we'll be right back. Okay. All right, as you can see, we're down now, just about ready to shut the air fryer down. 
And that'll go through my famous eight second cool down process. Since somebody knows why that's necessary, can you tell me? I mean, I realize I can open it, but I just wonder why they built it in. Okay, let's take a look, see what we got there. There we go. All right, looking good. Uh, obviously it's way too hot to do much with. I'm gonna lift it out of here, however. Okay, I'm just gonna lay it here. Can you get that? Mm-hmm. Okay, and just separate that. And there's your finished meatloaf. You can, if you listen carefully, you can hear it sizzling. So I'm gonna let it rest, you know, maybe about four or five minutes. Get it out of the pan, slice it up on the plate with a nice baked potato and a salad, and that's going to be our dinner for the evening. So, with that said, we thank you. Have a good night. And my wife is refusing to film me, and I know I wouldn't want to jeopardize you folks. Anyway, thank you so much again. Uh, very simple dinner, but I don't know how many people do it in the foodie. I don't know how many people will think it's worthwhile, but I wish you could taste it. You're not going to get this kind of texture from an oven. Have a good one. God bless. Be safe out there.